Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Sirino and today we're going to be talking about attributes for instances on Roblox. So Roblox added this attribute feature early 2021 as a beta feature and then at some point they released it where everyone can use it. And of course it's been out for a while now but I've actually just gotten into using it and it's actually pretty cool. So I'm just going to go over the API and how everything works. So I have this part here and it's named my part. And in our properties window, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, there's an attributes section. And this is an attribute that I've created and this is a Boolean. So if I go ahead and click on add attribute, you're able to give it a name and you're able to change the data type which you should know these data types. And if you're new to Lua coding, then you might not. But to go over them simply, a string is text. Boolean is a true or false value, which is what this little box is. And you know, I can check it and I can uncheck, which this means true and this means false. And then of course, a number represents a number. And then, you know, we have the UDIMs, which are used for ui and then we have brick color which has of course is a brick color value which is similar to our brick color in our appearance it'll be the same type of window with the same datas for the colors we also have color three which is if you wanted to do one of these where you change a specific to a specific color using hue sat and value and then the red green blue or the just little HTML value if you wanted. And then there's also vector two, vector three, number sequence, color sequence, number range, and rect. So an attribute, a good way to think of an attribute is essentially your own custom property for a part. Or let me not say part because this really can be added to any instance in the game. If I click on the lighting service, I can add an attribute if I want it to. But of course, you they might be used more for models or parts or something where you need to have some sort of custom properties. Oops. So a lot of people might use them for uh, settings. So say you had a car and you wanted to have a list of colors or uh, the max speed of the car, you would be able to add in each attribute for each of those. So speed, we could do like speed, put a number value and put 15 or something and that's our speed you can click on this little gear icon to rename or delete it i'm just going to delete it because i don't need that and so on you really can use it for whatever you want so how do we access these in a script it's a little different than most properties but it's still pretty simple so i created this active boolean attribute and inside my script i have a couple things written here and we're going to go over them so of course I have a variable that represents my part, which has the attribute. Here we have a set attribute option, which basically is just setting or changing the value of an attribute. So to do this, you need to have your instance and then colon set attribute. And then there's two arguments. The arguments are going to be the attribute and the value. Let me just type that in so you guys can see that. So when you're putting the name of an attribute, you have to put them in speech marks since, you know, like it's like a string. That's like the name. Um, I made a mistake at first and I was just putting this and I was getting really confused. It's just going to error because it's thinking you're looking for like a variable or something. But yeah, make sure you put a string. So that is to change an attribute. Then we have the same thing. But in this case, we are creating an attribute. If you set a name and a value and it doesn't exist, it's just going to create a new attribute. So let me go ahead and comment these out and I'm gonna start up my game so I can show you how that affects our attributes. See, our active is true and we now have a new attribute, which is a string, which is hello. So the cool thing I've noticed is you don't actually have to write in what data type you want the game will automatically detect it depending on what you do. So if I set this to false, the game would recognize that I'm looking for a Boolean value. So if I go back to my part, 
it'll create a boolean but of course the default is false so there's no change there next we have this which removes an attribute but just to show i actually wrote new attribute to delete but i'm actually going to change this to active but essentially you just have to set it to nil and it will remove the attribute from the instance so if i go ahead and run the game again click on part we should only have new attribute next we have oops we have getting an attribute if we wanted to create a variable you write your variable and it equals instance get attribute and all you have to do is write the name of the attribute and we also have the ability to get a table of all the attributes that exist so if i removed this and now we will have both we all have these two let's say i wanted to print all our attributes so as you can see there's a little drop down and it shows us we have active and new attribute which they also which is cool is they show you the value of this table which is super cool i didn't know that they did that um so that's cool it's cool you learn something new every day all right and next we have this function this event here which is going to detect a change in a certain attribute so you do get attribute change signal which is similar to get property change signal that you might use for other properties of an instance and then you have to type in the attribute name so anytime the value of the attribute changes it will fire this event and you can you know put your little code in here of what you want to happen and then we also have this here which attribute changed which it will detect change of any attribute that exists so it doesn't have to be something specific so that really is all that there is to attributes this is kind of everything you can do um i'm just going to show you some stuff that i've done with attributes so i have these parts over here that when you click on them they change color and inside this one i have some attributes for when it's active oops when it's active you see i click on it and it becomes active or inactive it's there and inside my script i'm just detecting if it's active or not and then i also have some other properties so the color for when it's active and the material as well as the color and the material for when it's not active and then same thing for this one, but this one just changes colors. And then something that I'm actually using this for is I'm working on a puzzle game currently, and I have this little button system where when you step on a button, the door opens and that's it. The button is activated. So I have a value inside of this button that is listed as active. So when I step on this button, it'll activate. There we go and now that it's activated i don't have to activate it anymore and that's just how i keep track of the buttons that are activated in my game so i hope you learned something new today and i hope this helps you out for any projects or just in general if you're learning lua so attributes are pretty cool and i think everyone should start using them they are kind of better than the previous method which was just using actual values like searching a bool and it creates this instance that's a bool you know it's just better honestly so yeah um so that's really all there is to attributes i will leave the api in the description if you want to look more at some template code or just you know just look around and read more about it because there is you know a lot to learn um but hopefully this helped you out. I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure you follow my Twitch because I stream a lot of development sometimes. And I also have a Discord server if you're interested, which will also be in the description. So that is all I have to say. I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.